Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. And you know, it's hard to believe that the 3DS first launched 13 years ago, back in 2011. So we're talking about a 13 year old console here that Nintendo themselves have now abandoned. And that's just so unfortunate because this really is such an amazing console. I have so many fond memories tied into the 3DS. But yeah, as sad as it may be, or at least according to Nintendo, it's the end of an era, quote unquote, officially. Technically, they shut down the 3DS eShop and they've since disconnected its online servers as well. But as strange as it might sound, I believe now is actually the perfect time to buy in. Now you're probably asking, well, Mr. J. Wood, why in the world do you think the 3DS is worth it this year, even despite all the things that I just mentioned? And well, that's what we're going to cover in today's video, because I think there's a lot of reasons to still love the 3DS in 2024 and really even beyond. Today, we will talk about the top 10 reasons, starting off with number one. The first reason to own a 3DS in 2024 is because of 3DS Homebrew. Yeah, let's just go and talk about the elephant in the room here. The 3DS lineup of consoles is incredibly, incredibly easy to hack. There's plenty of guides out there that'll easily walk you through it. And really, I mean, all you need is an SD card with enough storage to store your games on. That's it. Now, it might take you a few hours to get everything in place, you know, get a setup and all of that. But once you have everything in order, you're going to unlock the 3DS's true capabilities that was previously hidden to you. The homebrew community has absolutely just outdone themselves with the 3DS, and they've unlocked a whole slate of extra customization. They've brought features back, like Street Pass, which is kind of needed for some games. You can choose from an endless amount of wallpapers that you previously couldn't get. You can mod your games to make them even better. And most importantly, you can easily, easily install any 3DS game thanks to the revival of the eShop that Nintendo themselves previously shut down. And yes, this even includes ones that Nintendo previously killed off with the 3DS eShop closure and games that only released in other regions, such as Japan. On top of all that, if you have a new 3DS XL or a new 2DS XL, you can even overclock them to stabilize certain games that previously had bad performance problems on the 3DS, like Rayman 3D as one such example. Number two, and most importantly here, is the 3DS library. Whether you want to relive nostalgia memories or if you're discovering the 3DS library for the first time, in both scenarios, this is a console that is quietly jam-packed with absolutely fantastic games. There's a reason that the 3DS is one of my favorite consoles ever made, and that's because of its games. This is a legendary console with a ton of exclusive titles that you can't play anywhere else. Now, I actually have a separate video for my own personal top 30 3DS games ever made and I might actually update that list here sometime soon do subscribe if you want to see all that but more or less I'm I mean really the 3DS has games like you know you have Metroid Samus Returns it's got several Zelda games including the beloved Ocarina of Time remake there's exclusive Mario games like Mario 3D World which really takes advantage of that 3D feature and then there's also a ton of other games that we might not ever see again like Kid Icarus Uprising it is just such an underrated library of games but in my opinion, it really is one of the most unique and interesting list of games for any console ever made. Number three, it's pocketable. Now, as much as I love consoles like the Nintendo Switch and the Steam Deck for their hybrid form factors and their ability to play home console games on the go, you know, that's all very impressive. They're revolutionary in their own right, but they still lack that true handheld experience that the 3DS can offer you. In a lot of ways, the 3DS was the last true mainline handheld experience. I mean, let me kind of put it this way. I don't feel as comfortable carrying consoles like the Switch outside of my house, where, you know, you have to bring a carrying case with you or you have to put them in a backpack and they're just not very inconspicuous and you know there's that concern that somebody could steal them and there's a lot of things that goes into that whereas the 3ds on the other hand you know it has that clamshell design and it's got that small form factor this allows you to easily put it in your pocket and keep that low profile you don't need a carrying case you don't need a backpack or a purse all you need is your handy dandy pocket which makes it one of the best consoles to carry with you at any time given time. Number four, rarity. You know, the thing is, is that we're still in the early days of Nintendo abandoning the 3DS. I mean, come on, Nintendo, why did you have to do it? Why did you have to do this? But anyways, the important thing to understand here is because over time, these consoles might become harder to find at a good price and also in good condition. 
Right now, let's say if you want a new 3DS XL as an example, they can get pretty expensive depending on the quality that you get them in. But sometimes you can still find them for a fairly decent price. And there's also another way to actually save a little extra money. I mean, if you plan on hacking your 3DS anyways, you can actually get the Japanese model instead for a cheaper price, the new 3DS LL. And it's fairly easy to do. I know being a Japanese model might scare some people off, but for the most part, it's the exact same console as the Western version, just that it's in Japanese language and it's also region locked. Now, don't worry about all that though, because there's guides on how to hack it and how to also put it in English language. So you might have to put a little extra work into it, but they're sometimes a little bit more affordable. And interestingly, they do also have more color options as well, if that's something that you're interested in. So if you're looking to buy a 3DS or a 2DS, definitely don't ignore the Japanese options, which can easily be found on eBay. Number five, and this is one that really sticks out to me, is that it's unique. For me, the reason that the 3DS is so viable in 2024 and even beyond is because of how unique it is. Truth be told, we might not ever see another console like this again. That dual screen setup with its 3D effect is not something that can easily be emulated. Sure, I mean, you can put a 3DS emulator on something like your PC, you know, your phone, or even a Steam Deck, but it feels clunky on those devices because they only have one screen. And again, you also won't have the option to play these games in 3D that way. So the 3DS is unlike most other consoles because you can emulate other consoles like let's say the GameCube and still have a good experience, maybe actually even better because of those enhanced visuals that emulators can offer. But for the 3DS on the other hand, I think with a large portion of its games, they're still played best on the 3DS itself because of the unique features that it has to offer. It just feels much more comfortable to play them on a 3DS because you can play the games the way they were intended to be played. Dual screen, touchscreen, and even 3D if you opt in getting the 3DS model instead of the 2DS. Now, that's completely up to you though and how important you find that 3D feature. Number six, backwards compatibility. See, the thing about the 3DS is that you're not just buying into the 3DS library, and that's simply it. No, the 3DS offers much more than just that. You're also buying into the original DS library. You're buying into the Game Boy Advance, the Game Boy, the Super Nintendo, and even NES games. That extra versatility in the palm of your hands is something special, especially for the original Nintendo DS. Again, we have to go back to the uniqueness that the 3DS and really even the original Nintendo DS has to offer. That dual screen setup with touchscreen, and because the 3DS offers native backwards compatibility for the DS, this is actually one of the best options to play those games as well. Number seven, digital backups and preservation. So I actually have multiple 3DS consoles, and one of the reasons for that is for preservation purposes. There's no guarantee that your games or consoles will survive for the next two decades. But for me, what I've done is that I have my main unhacked 3DS where I play all of my physical games. However, I also have an extra hacked 3DS where I can install those physical games to have a digital library as well. Not only is this convenient because you can just pick up that console and play any game without you know swapping cartridges, but it also frees me from the worry that my other console or games might fail in the future. Number eight, Pretendo. While Nintendo may have shut down the 3DS servers, the online experience still lives on once again thanks to the homebrew community and Pretendo. Pretendo is more or less a replacement for those 3DS servers, and while it's still not necessarily complete, they've made a lot of progress in a short period of time. You can track it over on their website, and you can see that Pretendo already supports a lot of different games, including Mario Kart 7, it's got Super Mario Maker, and even Kid Icarus Uprising. Also, with the 3DS resurgence, it's got a surprising amount of activity. Number nine, this is actually a great first console to own. If you have a kid and you're looking for a good console to get them, the 3DS family of consoles is a perfect fit for so many different reasons. The 2DS is one such example is a much cheaper option, and it kind of gives you that old school Game Boy experience. Now, I know for me growing up, I always had a Game Boy with me. Whether I was laying in bed or, you know, if we were going on some kind of road trip or something like that, I had my Game Boy there to keep me entertained. Now, I know for a lot of people in today's world, they just kind of give their kids a phone and, you know, they let them play some kind of mobile game or whatever. But I think we all know that you're going to get a much better experience on a 2DS. It just offers better games. So I think the 2DS, with all of the great games that it has, and a lot of which that younger kids will enjoy, uh, really is a fantastic pickup for kids. And lastly here, my tenth reason is Pokemon ROM hacks. 
Really, I mean, Pokemon has always been synonymous with the Nintendo handheld experience. And on the 3DS, like we previously talked about, thanks to backwards compatibility, you can play all of those classics from the old Game Boy games all the way up to the 3DS entries thanks to emulation and backwards compatibility. However, you can also install Pokemon ROM hacks on a hack 3DS, which transforms those games into something completely new. Now for me personally, and everybody's different with this, but what I like to do is I like to play ROM hacks that basically allows you to play those games on hard mode. For years, the Pokemon community has asked Nintendo, I mean, we've asked and we've asked and we've asked them to add a more challenging option. And you know, for whatever reason, they just won't do that. That's where Pokemon ROM hacks comes in, though. They deliver that experience. So if you want to play something like, let's say, Pokemon Alpha Sapphire on hard mode, well, there's a ROM hack for that. If you want to play something like Pokemon X or Y that way, you can also play them on hard mode as well. Now, again, you can technically install these games in your PC and play them that way. That's completely up to you. But if you want to play games like Pokemon X with ROM hacks, again, I think the best way to play them is on the 3DS because you can play these games as they were intended to be played, dual screen and all. So there you go. That's 10 different reasons why I think 3DS is still worth it even all of these years later. It really offers just such a unique and special experience that you can't get elsewhere. And for that reason, it's it's a console that really stands out and is still viable even in the year of 2024 and beyond. But let me know what you all think about all of this. Are there any other reasons that I didn't mention on this list? Let me hear those in the comments below. Also, make sure to subscribe if you want to see some more 3DS content in the future. But until next time... Peace out.